You know, I already cover how to release low back pain associated with insomnia, and I cover how to release low back pain associated with the psoas major, which is associated with infertility and uh, sterility. And uh, so you need to check those um, training courses to uh, see how to do those techniques. But these are all the other muscles that can cause low back pain that are not um, those that I've listed. So um, here it is. There are other muscles besides these muscles that cause low back pain. Other muscles including the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a huge muscle. We don't think about it going to the low back, but the crust of the diaphragm originates from the lumbar spine. So sometimes you have to release the diaphragm in order to release low back pain. Pressing up into its billowy shape, you will be met with resistance. By pressing into the resistance of the diaphragm, slowly increase your pressure Slowly back your pressure out after that to encourage the release in yin mode. And by doing yang and yin release pulses throughout the ceiling of the diaphragm on the left side, on the right side, and especially uh, kind of going in under the sternal area, um, you can get the, uh, the crest attachments of the diaphragm to begin to release. And then um, using the intestines to actually uh, push on uh, the diaphragm where it descends back towards the lumbar spine, um, you can get some release that way also. It's kind of like doing a pressure point release through a phone book. <laughs> In releaseology for the upper torso, we talked about how the diaphragm can pinch the esophagus and cause acid reflux and trouble like uh, um, heartburn and so on. But uh, the esophagus is not the only thing that goes through the diaphragm. Also, the uh, descending aorta goes through the diaphragm, through the uh, aortal hiatus and on the way it uh, can get pinched by the diaphragm and I think that can affect the, the blood pressure going through the diaphragm and uh, um, make that navel not tense up even more. So let's show you the uh, another group of muscles. These are This is the first erector spinae muscle we're going to go over and uh, the erector spinae are the large spinal muscles that uh, span the torso and uh, I'm just going to show you the techniques for the lower part. This lower part is called the sacrospinalis. It's actually the confluence of all three of the sinews of the erector spinae um, just before it attaches to the sacrum and uh, it can get really thick right where it attaches to the sacrum and you really have to apply sustained um, steady pressure on that sacrum to uh, get those fibers to, to release. And uh, a lot of times you have to release the attachments up onto the uh, vertebrae and ribs, you know, to get, get the spinalis in you first as the central band of the sacrospinalis and then start working on what I'll call the longissimus, longissimus thoracis. The longissimus thoracis begins at the sacrospinalis and it, you know, you can see in this picture it comes up and it attaches to all the ribs and all the vertebra all the way up to uh, the top of the thoracic spine. But uh, it can definitely cause low back pain because of its uh, pathway across the low back. So you might need to release the whole thing on occasion to uh, help people that are having uh, lower torso pain in the back. And remember that uh, the nerves that come out of the thoracic spine all have to come out between the thoracic vertebra. And this, this muscle, when it's really in spasm, it could actually uh, put undue tension on any of the inner uh, vertebral joints along the spine and it can uh, knock any of the ribs out of place. It's very strong. So it's called longissimus because it's the longest of all three of the different sinews. The longissimus thoracis always gives me the feeling that it's mounding up the rib cage. So it kind of pulls the rib cage up and you know creates this curve. And uh, I always get the sensation that I just want to flatten that thing out. So I just um, find the middle of the tension in this muscle and I just press straight down into the table, kind of like flattening their uh, spine out, which lengthens them towards their head, really. You have a small vector in that direction, but a lot of it is just going straight into it and flattening it out. And uh, pressure in this area also feels really good, by the way. So just go into it. Um, right now I'm demonstrating just kind of how to stretch, but here we go. The best thing to do is just go straight into it and just nail it. Straight down into the table, flattening it out and give it a lot of pressure. You want to do a sustained pressure for at least a minute. It'll feel great. I'm sorry I'm moving around here, but the idea is to hold it for like a minute. Slowly back your pressure out once you've uh, been pressing into it for about a minute. You know, I call that yang mode when you're pressing into it. And then switch to yin mode where you slowly back your pressure out and uh, try to encourage a release. When you feel it start to melt, you'll feel energy go through your body to the ground and you'll feel the uh, all the spinal muscles lengthen out. You'll feel like you know, the tailbone and the head um, drift away from each other as this uh, 
Um, I just miss thoracic releases, so try these techniques. If someone is suffering from lower back pain that is actually caused by a spinal muscle, it probably is this lungismus thoracis muscle causing it because it's, it's got to be the strongest out of all the erector spinae muscles. The other options, remember in the low back are muscles that we've already gone over, the serratus posterior inferior. And also the psoas major in the front usually is actually the main cause of low back pain. But you have to check these muscles in the back just to make sure because if they're tight they can cause an achy feeling and uh, definitely pull vertebrae out of place. And the lungismus thoracis, this muscle is the thickest out of all the spinal muscles. And it sure is long, huh? Comes all the way from the sacrum all the way up onto the uh, back of the ribs. Okay, let's uh, do this for a couple more minutes and uh, I'll show you the iliocostalis. Remember there are three erector spinae bands, the spinalis, the lungismus, and the iliocostalis. The spinalis because it attaches to the spinous process of the vertebra. The lungismus is called lungismus because it's the longest of the three. And the iliocostalis is called the iliocostalis because it basically travels the pathway between the ilium and the costals. Costals means ribs, so costillas in Spanish, I think, and costales in uh, Latin. So iliocostalis. Let's uh, check the lower portion of the iliocostalis. It's, uh, well, the very bottom is iliocostalis lumborum, but this is the iliocostalis thoracis, which does attach to the lower ribs. And uh, this is a lower torso section we're working on. So you might have to release this most outer lateral band of the rector spinae, the iliocostalis thoracis. Like I said, this is a section up on the rib cage. And um, basically what you want to do is you want to try to traction the ribs up towards the, uh, the head, um, towards the top of the rib cage is the direction that you're stretching in. Remember the, the ribs are like bucket handles and so you're sort of like trying to uh, lift the bucket handle up and out while you're doing a slow pressure point release on each of uh, the pressure points that you're finding. There's, um, it attaches to like six different vertebra through the lower section here of the uh, thorax of the rib cage. So you can stop on each of them for maybe like 20 to 30 seconds each. Uh, intensify your pressure while you're holding the stretch and then try to trigger the release by slowly backing your pressure out. I know I'm jumping around in my demonstration, but you get the idea. Okay, so let's show you the uh, iliocostalis lumborum next. The iliocostalis lumborum attaches to the lumbar section. Here's a really great picture. You can see how all the nerves come out between the ribs. Those are called intercostal nerves. And you can see the spinal nerves coming out into the lumbar section below that. Sorry, on to the next thing with the video here. Um, <clears throat> so position yourself so you're pushing from the ground using a good stance, kind of a martial arts stance. Use your whole body so you're not really squeezing with your hands at all, but you're uh, keeping your hands and your wrists relatively aligned. And what you're doing is you're trying to get in to the iliocostalis lumborum, the most outer um, rector spinae sinew, and uh, lift the lower rib cage while you're stretching that muscle. Stretching while you're intensifying pressure into the points, and then slowly back your pressure out and uh, see if you can trigger a release. When you trigger a release in the iliocostalis lumborum, you'll feel the lower rib cage relax and you'll feel um, space open up between it, the lower rib cage, and the sacrum. Or, uh, not the sacrum, but the ilium actually, because the iliocostalis actually does attach to the ilium and not the sacrum. The other, uh, the spinalis and the, the uh, longissimus sinews of the erector spinae do attach to the sacrum, but the iliocostalis attaches to the ilium. So let me go and uh, press on the actual attachment on the ilium here. Um, so I'm definitely using my stance. This is a very strong muscle, and um, I'm stretching her whole hip down. Um, away from the weight of her uh, thorax while I'm doing this and I'm um, just kind of keeping balance with uh, my outside hand there. To repeatedly do a yin yin pulse until it releases. Okay, let's show you the uh, levator coste muscles. The levator costae muscles are a series of muscles that um, are mostly in um, the upper torso, so I'm only going to show you a couple of the lower points, but um, the idea is to uh, stretch the uh, ribs down 
um, from the spine with uh, these muscles because they lift the ribs. So uh, what you want to do is press into them and uh, stretch away from the spine at the same time. So yang yin pulses into those. Now let's show you their, uh, the muscles from a different angle. So same muscles. Um, what you do is uh, you can use uh, one hand to uh, maneuver the ribs. And uh, the other hand, you know, goes in and fishes around with uh, your fingertips for those muscles. And that's where you're gonna, the hand that you're gonna do the pressure points with. So um, I'm just kind of checking around to see uh, which of the levator costume muscles are actually tight and which ones aren't. And oh, I found a tight one. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, do a yang yin pulse on this uh, levator costume muscle. Okay, this one, let's do it. Focus your attention and your pressure and your energy into the center of the release point until you're there. Okay, I'm there, stretching, bracing with the other hand. Now let's focus my pressure, pressing harder and harder into the muscle and uh, pulling back and doing a slow release. That triggers the, uh, the yin phase when you slowly back your pressure out. So, you know, you're pushing all the way from uh, your stance on the ground all the way through your body into your fingertips um, to apply the yang load. And then when you slowly back your pressure out, you're like very slowly making it feel like you're back out even though you don't go anywhere. Like after a minute, you're still, you know, holding the pressure sometimes and making it still feel like you're backing out. So can you do those at the same time? Use a lot of pressure and make it feel like you back out for as long as possible. That's the trick. And uh, you want to do it with each of these muscles, and you want to do each of them until they let go completely. Okay, let's show you the uh, bigger brother of the levator coste muscles. It's called they're called the levator costarum. They're uh, I'm getting into really fine detail. Probably a lot of people wouldn't believe I'm even demonstrating uh, releasing these muscles because they're kind of a random muscle, but um, they can be involved with pain in the lower torso because they can offset a rib um, just through the uh, lower uh, three uh, false ribs. The idea is that they, uh, you know, they are uh, anchored on ribs above and they uh, lift the ribs below and it can cause kind of a bevel sensation between the ribs. Um, so if you feel that offsetting of the ribs um, through these lower um, sections of ribs, then what you do is you uh, stretch the uh, lower rib um, away, down and away to uh, like traction it from the rib above. It's really hard to hurt a tight muscle by pressing on it because muscles are tough. So just make sure you're on a muscle and you can press very firmly. Just make sure you're uh, not pressing on anything else and uh, have a slight trajectory um, going out. And uh, you'll feel the, the muscle get tight like a tight rubber band under your thumb. And what you do is you focus energy in, focus pressure in, hold your balance, wait until it feels like it wants to melt and then slowly back your pressure up, triggering a release. And you do that with each of the levate, levator costarum muscles until uh, they release all the way. And uh, this really opens up the breathing, by the way. These muscles will restrict breathing for sure if uh, someone's been uh, exercising really hard and strained their, uh, you know, their ribs by uh, breathing really hard, or uh, you know, just have a tight rib cage and it feels like rough breathing because um, one has uh, tight ribs. So we basically made our way through all the techniques for releasing low back pain, haven't we? Um, so uh, there is one other kind of low back vicinity pain that people can get, and it's called sacroiliac pain. So the bottom vertebra, or not the very bottom, the bottom vertebra are actually the coccyx, um, but above the coccyx is the sacrum. It's a triangle bone kind of between the butt cheeks, and uh, off to uh, each side of that are the ilium bones. The ilium bones are the hip bones, and uh, the sacroiliac joint is the joint between the two. So what can uh, lift the ilium up out of place? Well, the strongest muscle attached to the top of the ilium is actually the latissimus dorsi. The latissimus dorsi attaches to the arm on one side, and in anatomy we think of it as uh, being an anchor to uh, pull the arm down using the contraction of the uh, latissimus dorsi. 
but um, besides pulling the arm down, it actually uh, gives a little tug in an upward direction on the ilium. So it pulls the ilium up towards the head a little bit. see how I'm uh, gathering the muscle a little bit under the uh, scapula. It's a big giant muscle, so to release it, what you want to do is uh, gather it up from um, the side of the low back and um, pull the fibers towards the armpit. And, you know, at first you might need to massage a little bit the way I'm doing to really feel um, where the tight fibers are. But once you uh, focus in on, you know, which bundle of fibers in the latissimus dorsi are tight, go ahead and try to establish a stretch. When you establish a stretch, use your uh, fingers in kind of a phalanx-like position and penetrate into the points. And uh, hold the muscle tight. Hold your points up. Boy, I'm taking forever to get a good position here. I'm sorry. Um, let me see. Okay, that works. So, pressure point release. The latissimus dorsi attaches to the bottom of the scapula here, so it's a good place for it to not slip. Okay, good yang. I've got the stretch going. I feel it stretching all the way from almost like the tailbone and the ilium for sure. And then slowly backing out to do release. Let me try it again. So slowly building my pressure. It's a yang cycle, I call it. You can feel like you're pulling your pressure out, um, even though you don't really go anywhere after like 30 seconds to 60 seconds. And see if you can trigger a release. So make it feel like you're backing out, even though you don't go anywhere and you're stretching it that big latissimus dorsi muscle up from the ilium. Maintain that stretch, really hold it, feel the fiber stretching up from the ilium, and then as you release, feel like it's releasing back down to the hip bone, to the ilium. And you see what that does, when you release it completely, it releases the ilium, and the ilium can, the pressure on the ilium can uh, release the top of the ilium, and it uh, can allow the sacrum and the ilium to uh, realign by doing that. And that's the whole idea of um, showing you the uh, latissimus dorsi technique for, for the, um, the lo lower torso. I know it's not necessarily thought of as a lower torso muscle, but it definitely causes low back pain and it can definitely uh, offset the uh, sacroiliac joint. So whenever someone has low back pain, release the latissimus dorsi. If the sacroiliac joint is not lining up the right way, release the, sacro the latissimus dorsi muscle. Okay. So that covers all the release techniques for all the other muscles that can cause low back pain besides the psoas major and the serratus posterior inferior. So get a, give them a shot, try all the techniques, and definitely go through the memorization exercises for each of them and try to actually work on somebody that has low back pain. And if these techniques don't work, then you need to try the serratus posterior inferior or the psoas major techniques as well. Okay, thanks. Catch you on the next video.